From December 1st to December 12th, I just completed the 12 days of real estate countdown. And the response from those of you across Toronto has been incredible. It's so nice to hear from you, especially those of you in those areas, but most importantly, those of you who are curious about what's going on in your own neighborhoods. That's what the real purpose of this countdown was. So on this episode, you're going to hear all of the episodes combined as one. So I basically decided to put them all together to give you the complete rundown in one podcast. So it's going to be a longer one than usual, but I do hope you're going to enjoy it. And step two, and this is the most important step to make this real, you need to understand how your community is fitting into this breakdown. So the best way to find out is very simply visit myneighborhoodnews.com and get signed up for your latest update in real time with all the key data, the key, especially the four key data elements that every homeowner needs to know, especially right now. And a lot of the information that you're going to see there is based on sales that have not yet been made public. So it's important for you to know what's going on behind the scenes in your community before the rest of the world knows, because as someone who lives there, you should be on top of what's going on. You shouldn't let the news tell you three or four weeks after the fact that things aren't going so well in the neighborhood. You should know before they do. This is how you find out. Enjoy this episode. Any questions, give me a call or visit me at realestatepodcastshow.com. And today is the big day. It is day 12 of 12 days of real estate, which is the wrap up that I've done for 2022 to give you the ultimate rundown of the top 12 sold average price areas in the city. And today's final area is the Bridal Path St. Andrew Winfields area, which is always going to be on the top list of uh, most uh, yearly sales. It's one of the most sought after neighborhoods in the uh, in the country. It's actually been very often the most affluent neighborhood in Canada, uh, often to often referred to as Millionaire's Row. It was established back in 1929 when it was really just farmland and then it grew into what it is now, which is a very unique uh, part of our city and of course has one of the most famous residents, Prince, who used to live here. Um, that says that that's basically tells you everything you need to know. So average sold price in this area for 2022 to date is 3.6 million. And as always, it's the stories behind the sales, especially in this community. So the top 10 sales in this area, and you're going to want to hold on to your hats for this one are in the 8.7 range. 8.7 million range right up to north of 19 million. So these are sales that have happened. So you're looking at, again, a very, very unique, um, very unique area, obviously one of a kind. And I want to make sure that you're seeing these properties uh, and of course, getting all the details with me. And you need to remember one thing. I am the only one telling the stories that no one else can so that I can get you the sold values that no one else can. There is no better global exposure for your listings than right here on the top result on Google for real estate podcast show. Day 11 of 12 features the Lawrence Park community of Toronto. Lawrence Park was ranked one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in all of Canada in 2011. It's by far one of the most affluent communities in the city. It was developed in 1907. And essentially, when you take a walk through here, when you look at the, some of the 
most affluent and most exclusive residential neighborhoods, you're going to find them right here in the Lawrence Park community. And I do hope that you'll be doing those tours with me. So let's get right into the real estate element of the wrap up. So the average sold price to date for this area is 2.3 million. And as you've been hearing from previous podcasts, there's always more to the story than that statistic. If you think that's uh, what that's the only prices that are happening in those neighborhoods, you're way, way off. So in this area, the top 10 souls for 2022 ranged everywhere from the 6.3 million right to north of 10 million. So that gives you an idea of what sort of properties are here. Uh, Very exclusive estates, very one of a kind properties and making sure that I'm the one telling the stories of those properties is so important for you when you're selling your property so I can get you the sold values that no one else can. Don't assume these stories are being told by everyone. This is the only podcast that's the top result on Google for real estate podcast show. And it's located right here in Toronto. Realestatepodcastshow.com, paul.indrigo at c21.ca. Always love to hear your feedback, your questions, your comments, and anything about the podcast. Day 10 of 12 of the 12 days of real estate is featuring the Rosedale community of Toronto. This remains one of the highlights of my tours and of this podcast because it's been featured on the podcast many, many times. Rosedale's also been ranked as the best neighborhood in Toronto to live in by Toronto Life. Uh, It's of course home to many of Ontario's and Canada's most notable and affluent people. And it was named so by Mary Jarvis as she would walk around her estate and um, enjoy all the wild roses that grace the hillside uh, of their Rosedale home. So to give you the rundown of what exactly is going on real estate wise, we are now crossing the 2.1 million uh, range as the average sold price in the area. But of course, because this area is such a unique one, uh, the stories behind the souls here are certainly one of a kind. Um, over the years, I've been very blessed to be part of some of those. But in this case, the average sold prices in the top 10 range everywhere from the 5.7 range right up to north of 10 million. And again, these are very unique character homes uh, with amazing stories behind them. And for that reason alone, do not ever put your property in Rosedale on the market without me included. Make sure you give me the chance to tell the stories that no one else is telling about these properties to ensure you're getting the values that no one else is getting. Realestatepodcastshow.com, paul.intrigo at c21.ca. Welcome to day nine of the 12 days of real estate. Today's rundown is going to be including the Forest Hill community of Toronto. This area was established in 1923, along with many other parts of Toronto, and it was amalgamated by the province into the city of Toronto in 1967. If you know anything about Forest Hill, if you've been on any of my tours over the years, you know that it's one of the most character filled areas, so much history, so many famous people that have come from here. You can basically run down the list of everyone from George Kohan, the founder of McDonald's in Moscow and owner of the McDonald's restaurants of Canada. 
Kurt Browning, figure skater, Nelly Furtado, singer, songwriter, Doug Gilmore, and the list goes on. So today I'm going to be going through the rundown of what's happening real estate wise. So as average sold prices go, the average sold price here is 1.7 million at the time of this podcast. And in the top 10, you're also going to be looking at a majority of properties in these seven figures, high sevens, and also even into the eights. So you're looking at the top 10 ranging anywhere from the 6.3 average sold price, uh, so f- from the 6.3 range price right up to north of $15 million. So this is one of those, again, very affluent areas where there's a lot of uh, very unique, one of a kind properties in the city that you won't see anywhere else. And the best way to see them is with me via real estate podcast show.com, whether you're buying or selling or renting here and, or email me paul.indrigo at c21.ca. Would love to hear your thoughts, your stories, and any feedback you have on the podcast. Following the sale of his summer house in the Scarborough area, and this was, of course, in the very early 1900s, Henry Pellet sold his Scarborough home and moved into what would become Casa Loma, which was constructed between 1911 to 1914. The architect was E.J. Lennox who also designed several other city landmarks. On day eight of 12 days of real estate, today, my goal is to give you a perfect rundown of what's happening in the CO2 area, which includes the Annex, Young St. Clair, and of course, Casa Loma. So the average sold price in this area was 1.7 million. However, when you're looking at the top 10 sales in this area, you're definitely going to see some unique stories that occur. In this case, there ha- there were several that were not just seven figures, but eight figure sales. So you're talking about north of 10 million. So the top 10 sales in this area, which include the Annex, Casa Loma, mostly Casa Loma, range everywhere from the 7.5 million range right up to just under 12 million. So it's very important for you guys to understand that these properties are very, very unique, one of a kind. Established in 1883, this area of the city, the Queensway Humber Bay area, now known on the MLS as the Stonegate Queensway area, is today's feature area, W07. Today's day seven of the 12 days of real estate. So let's start off with a little bit about this wonderful area. And of course, if you don't know the history, it's actually very, very interesting. The fact that the area was actually uh, created, one of the subdivisions in the area was actually created by a businessman from the U.S. by the name of Mr. Davidson. And he imported 40 small prefab homes, which were placed on Davidson Crescent, which is now gone. But that is what essentially started the beginning of this uh, wonderful community of the city. So to get into the real estate sales, the average sold price in this area for, uh, sorry, right up to date is 1.6 million. So this is one of the more affluent neighborhoods across the city. And in the top 10 souls, the price ranges are anywhere from the 3.5 range to just under 5 million. So these were all again in the Stonegate 
Queensway area. And for more details, for more specifics, the best thing to do is just reach out to me directly, realestatepodcastshow.com. I really do want to hear your thoughts, your opinions, um, your stories. If you live in these areas, that is really what makes this podcast so interesting is adding your voices and your stories as part of what makes it so great. So reach out to me at paul.indrigo at c21.ca and hope to hear from you soon. Welcome to day six of the 12 days of real estate. I'm very happy to be bringing you along on a tour of a podcast tour of the beach area. This includes the upper beach in the EO2 area. It actually includes the upper beach and also some areas of the Danforth, just south of the Danforth. So to give you an idea of, again, how important this area is, it's one of the most sought after communities in all of the city. Um, The beach specifically specifically started off as a cottage area that in the 20s and 30s started becoming developed. I believe the boardwalk was built in the early 30s, having just done a recent listing there. Uh, I did a podcast about that. So um, it's a very, lots of history, incredible shopping, great parks, access to bike paths, everything you could imagine. For this area, the average price to date is 1.47 million. So it's almost 1.5 million in this area. And to give you a rundown of what some of the top 10 souls in the area were, um, basically you're looking at anywhere from the 3.5 million right up to the just low 4 millions that uh, properties have sold here for. And it's important, as as I've done before, it's important for you to know uh, which one of those has sold. And of course, every single one of those that sold, that sells near you does affect your home value. So make sure you reach out to me today at realestatepodcastshow.com and find out, again, more about what's going on in your postal code area. And I can certainly set you up with a, a home valuation plus the more important part, which is the My Neighborhood News element, which is unique specifically to me and this podcast. And it gives you insights, specific insights on your postal code area. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to day five of the 12 days of real estate. Today's episode is about the EO1 area, also known as the Riverdale, Leslieville area. This area has a lot of significance to me over the years. It was one of the first areas that I ever sold a property on Lang Street. Um, I have also sold many of the Broadview lofts in the pre-construction mode. So I know this area very well. This was developed in the 1800s into um, the Riverside, Don Mount, and Leslieville areas that are within these uh, this neighborhood. Um, fantastic area to live, close to everything. Queen Street car, amazing shops, um, music, art, everything that you could imagine. Uh, in terms of the real estate element, the average sold price in this area was 1.3 million. This is to date for 2022. And some of the most notable sales in the area range everywhere from the, in the top 10, everywhere from the 3 million range, right up to one property that sold in the actual, like almost 7.5 million range. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of different kinds of properties here, everything from homes to condos to, as I mentioned, some of the most amazing lofts in Toronto are in this area, in the Leslieville area, Broadview lofts, Carlaw lofts, uh, so many. Reach out to me at realestatepodcastshow.com and let's discuss perhaps your plans on moving. If you're interested in finding out your current home value, and I will definitely make sure that I give you absolutely all the best information on that. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to day four of the 12 days of real estate countdown on today's 
episode, we're going to be looking at the W01 area. This is the High Park, Swansea area of Toronto. This is definitely one of my very favorite areas, and there's so many great things about the history of this area. Uh, there's too much to get into today. But essentially, in 1836, John, John George Howard purchased 160 acres of property in the county of York to the west of Toronto at the cost of $1,000. By 1876, this area was, be was to become open and to become part of the High Park area, and it was open to the public. And ever since, it's been one of the most popular tours uh, for people living in that area um, who love the High Park Swansea area. So the average sold price in this area was $1.3 million. But again, as you've been finding out, there's a lot more behind the scenes of that average. So in the top 10, the properties ranged everywhere from sold, place, sold prices of $4 million right up to almost 7 million. And the very interesting story is although a lot of those were earlier in the year, one of them actually happened to be very recently. So if you are in this area, if you are thinking about making a move, if you're interested in finding out where your property value is, Today is the day to reach out to me at realestatepodcastshow.com. You can simply uh, contact me through there and I can actually work on right from the beginning, right from our first meeting, give you an exact idea of what your maximum home value is and let you know where you stand right now. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your day. Welcome back to day three of the 12 days of real estate countdown. Today, I'm going to be doing a wrap up of the W02 area, which contains a couple of different areas. Um, one of them being the junction area and another being the baby point area. So I'm going to give you a quick little bit of a history on this one, and then we're going to go through the stats. Um, Baby Point specifically was an area that in the 19th century, a lawyer by the name of James Baby bought the land from the Upper Canada government, which it had bought as part of the Toronto Purchase. The land was developed into the current neighborhood in the early 20th century, and the name is pronounced by locals as Babby Point to rhyme with Tabby or Cabby in an approximation of how James Baby pronounced his surname. So to give you a quick rundown, the average sold price in this area was $1.3 million. However, as you've been listening, there are a lot more behind the scenes than that. So what I like to do is also run down the top 10 solds in this area to give you an idea of what exactly is going on. So specifically in the Lambton Baby Point area, there were 10 sales. Uh, that, sorry, the top 10 sales were everywhere from the 3 million mark right up to almost 10 million. So if you're in this area and if you're curious about what your property might be valued at, today's the day to reach out to me and find out more. I can make sure that you got all the best information specific to your postal code and specific to your home value. Realestatepodcastshow.com is the place to start and I will hopefully hear from you soon. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Paul here, realestatepodcastshow.com. This is day two of the 12 days of real estate here in Toronto. Just doing a quick review of the top sold stories of 2022. And today on the list is the C11 area, which is known as the Leaside area of Toronto. Um, some of you may or may not know this, but Leaside at one point, was actually part of East York. Uh, and that, of course, was uh, in 1967. It was incorporated as a town in 1913, but in 1967, it became part of East York. And in 1990, 1998, both East York and Leaside 
split and it was a good split and they uh, each became part of the city of Toronto. Uh, it remains one of the most sought after communities in all of Toronto. Every time I've done a tour here, um, people have always really enjoyed the area uh, and of course everything that uh, Leaside has to offer as well. So today's podcast is about giving you a quick update on what's been going on there. So uh, average sold price to date is about 1.35 million in this area. And some of the highlights from the sales that's, that's been going on, uh, there's been sales in the top 10 as high as 7 million. So in the top 10, there was properties for sale in the 4.3 million range listed, uh, right up to the 6.6 million range listed. So this is one of those areas that has some of the most affluent homes, most incredible architecture you'll ever see. Make sure you join me, realestatepodcastshow.com for more details, and I'll talk to you soon. Paul here, realestatepodcastshow.com. Very excited to be bringing you an absolutely one of a kind new program that I'm going to be doing every December. Hopefully you guys will like it and hopefully I'll even maybe do it more often. But this is called the 12 Days of Christmas, 12 Days Countdown of Toronto Real Estate Soul Stories. So I'm going to be over the next just very short time, probably in the next two minutes, I'm going to be going over absolutely everything you need to know in all the top 12 sold areas of the city as of December 2022. And these are the November stats I'm using, but roughly speaking, it's going to be a, approximately the same. So I'm going to start off with the first area on the list is in the East York Danforth area. This area had an average sold price of 1.28 million so far to date. And the top 10 souls in this community, and again, this is an area that I've known very well. I've lived there for over 20 years, so I know it uh, as well as anybody could. So the top three sales were in the Plater Estates area. The number four on the list was in the Broadview North. Number five, also Plater Estates followed by the O'Connor Parkview area. And lastly, the others were in the East York proper area. So, and that range is anywhere from 3 million right up to almost 5 million. That is the rundown of the East York area in terms of the top 12, um, uh, top 12 uh, that we're reviewing. And I'm going to keep doing this every day. And I hope that you'll follow me and uh, join me for the next one coming up tomorrow. Thanks again.